So the next portion of the class, right, so let's, let's take a very brief uh, overlook of what we talked about so far. So the first third of the class, we focused on uh, central metabolism, so everything in the middle. And then the second third of the class, we talked about fatty acids and photosynthesis, essentially everything on the right. Supposedly, the third of the class is supposed to focus on nucleic acids and proteins. Basically, everything related to nitrogen, okay? Nitrogen in biochemistry or nitrogen in life. But I might not have the time to finish everything. So primarily, I'll focus on how to detoxify nitrogen in life, how to make proteins, uh, make amino acids and degrade amino acids, and probably that will uh, wrap up the course. Nucleotides, they're not as heavily focused because they are essentially just, you know, pathways, and they are more complicated than, than I want to get into. So we'll get there if we have time, but if not, then that's just it, okay? So we're going to focus on nitrogen metabolism. Why is nitrogen important? Okay, so that this should be a very no-brainer for you guys. Two out of four major Biomacromolecules contain nitrogen, okay? They are amino acids and nucleic acids. Of course, carbon chemistry is very important, but we're gonna focus a little bit on nitrogen chemistry. So enzymes are needed to catalyze the reactions for life, okay? And enzymes are made out of amino acids, and amino acids have nitrogen in them, okay? So nitrogen is important for that purpose. DNA and RNA are needed for information relay and information storage, so, they are also very important. So nitrogen is a very important uh, thing for life, okay? Now, this, this pay attention, okay? Nitrogen availability often limit the growth and reproduction for many organisms. When nitrogen and other nutrients leak into the environment, so uh, I don't know if you guys have seen pictures of algal bloom, okay? Especially in the summer, okay? If your environment have uh, nitrogen in it, a lot of nitrogen, and organisms, especially like algae in the water, they'll be like, oh, wow, a lot of nitrogen. Okay, I'm going to grow up. Okay, I'm going to make a lot of proteins, and I'm going to grow really, really fast. Okay? So you'll end up with pond or lakes, not pond, uh, lakes that looks like that. Okay, green lakes. Okay, some of those, those algae. Usually, what, what happens? Okay, what, what, why is this bad? Okay, um, you can imagine you have a lot of other life forms that live inside of the water. For example, your ducks, okay? or your fishes, right? So usually, algal blooms will cause a lot of uh, dead fishes, okay? Why? Because they are on the surface, okay? And essentially, what happens is that they will prohibit oxygen from going into the bottom of the water. So as a result, your fish uh, deprive of oxygen and then they die, okay? And a lot of times, these uh, algae also secrete toxic intermediates, okay, toxic compounds. There's a very big, biotoxin called microcystin, okay, produced by a microalgae, or actually cyanobacteria, right? Biological nitrogen. If we are talking about biological nitrogen, we, we, since this is a biochemistry class, we need to look at a little bit on the chemical aspect. So what are the nitrogen used for biology, right? So we have complex molecules like proteins and DNA, and amino acids and nucleic acids. Okay. So these things are directly usable for making cellular machinery such as protein and DNA. Okay. For example, humans, we have essential and non-essential amino acids. This amino acids amino acids. 做那种不吃碳水化合物的那种打野有没有？他们就只吃肉。那他们的打野里面就会有很大量的proteins，所以告诉我们proteins可以拿来做energy的generation。Okay，so basically it shows you that your ammonia, okay, or not ammonia, your nitrogen can be derived from amino acids and proteins and DNAs. Okay, so this is very complex. A little bit complex. Okay, so this is simple, but this is complex, right? So both of these we can directly use, right? We can, for example, eat proteins. We degrade them into amino acids, and then we make uh, use of these amino acids to make the proteins and the DNAs for ourselves. Okay.
So those we can directly utilize. Then you might be wondering, so then where do you get your amino acids from? Okay, we get amino acids from, for example, uh, cows, like we eat cows, okay? we eat beef, eat pork, okay? or eat plants. Okay? Where do, for example, cows get their proteins from? Okay? They get it from plants. Okay? Then where do plants get amino acid from? Okay? They gotta synthesize the amino acid, and they're gonna synthesize it from something. That something is usually ammonia, okay? NH3. Ammonia. So ammonia is one of the most important biological nitrogen source. Okay? So it's most important and it's going to turn ammonia into amino acids through these ammonia assimilation reactions and that we will uh, talk about. Okay? Going from ammonia, then you'd be wondering uh, where do you get ammonia from? Okay? So you can get ammonia from more Oxidized nitrogen, uh, these are nitrates and nitrites. Okay? Ammonia is a reduced nitrogen because it has a lot of protons on it, or hydrogens on it, sorry. Hydrogens, here is oxygen. Right? So these guys are more oxidized than this. Okay? So as a result, in order to turn nitrate to nitrite to ammonia, you need to input energy. Make sense? All right? Additionally, the vast majority of nitrogen on planet Earth is in the form of N2, okay? Molecular nitrogen. N2 is nitrogen gas. It's super, super stable on planet Earth. It accounts for about 70 to 80% of your Earth atmosphere, about 80%. So that's a lot of nitrogen that you can use, okay? Now, nitrogen, okay, a lot, we have a lot of it on Earth. That's because it's very stable, okay? It's super stable, okay? N2 is a super, super stable gas, right? So as a result, if you want to turn N2 into something like ammonia, you're going to use a lot of energy, okay? So it's going to require lots of energy, okay? But biology can do it, okay? We can turn <coughs> nitrogen gas into ammonia. This thing is called the nitrogen fixation. When we talked about photosynthesis, Rubisco <coughs> does CO2 fixation. This is N2 fixation. So fixation means 把它从气体抓下来,抓到有机物理,叫 fixation, okay? Priority, okay? So for life, we have priority. If you have complex molecules, you use complex molecules first, okay? So if you got these things, use them first. And then what you can use is ammonia, because ammonia go to complex molecule pretty easy. Ammonia assimilation, one enzyme, done, okay? If you don't have ammonia, then you can use nitrate and nitrite because all you got to do is reduce them and put some energy in it and then you can get ammonia. If you don't have nitrate or nitrite, then you got to use N2 gas, okay? N2 gas is like the last resort. If you got nothing else to use, you might as well use N2 gas, okay? So this is your priority. Right? Now, in terms of biology, of course, everything is in a way reverse. They're not reversible, but there are processes that can go to ammonia, that can go from ammonia to nitrate. You can go from ammonia to nitrogen gas. You can go from nitrogen gas to ammonia. They use different enzymes, but there are enzymes that can do one direction another enzyme go the other direction, okay? Why is this of course? Because if you think about it, if we don't have uh, these type of reactions that go against each other, then you will have a net accumulation, okay? But to our knowledge, there's no um, net accumulation of, for example, ammonia, okay? All right, biological nitrogen availability, like I said, uh, the most abundant source is N2 gas, okay? We have about 78% of the gas in the atmosphere is made out of nitrogen, okay? Although nitrogen gas is very abundant in Earth or on Earth, its direct utilization is limited to few organisms, okay? Very few organisms can do this. Number one example is this thing called the rhizobium, okay, or rhizobia, okay? Rhizobium, they live around the roots of legume plants, okay? So they have a symbiosis, okay, symbiotic relationship with these plants, okay? So plants can give them some organics 
and these guys can fix N2 and give plants ammonia. Okay, 这就为什么你们说长长植物有没有？你们的盆栽啊，如果长在土里面，土壤里面一定要有细菌，对不对？因为如果没有的话，你没有 N2 source。OK， 没有 nitrogen source， 你的 plant 就不可能长，然后会挂掉。OK， these bacteria that can fix N2， we usually call them diatrophs， diazotrophic organisms。Therefore， most other organisms heavily rely on these N2 fixing microbes to generate ammonia。And for life to thrive， N2 fixation to ammonia is very very important。OK， so here I want to talk about how you do that。Okay, so we're not going to spend too much time on nitrogenase, but I want you guys to know this thing exists. Okay, so nitrogen fixation. You turn nitrogen N2 to ammonia. Okay, essentially what you're doing is N2 plus 3H2 gives you two ammonia. Okay, now delta G is very large, so you might be thinking, ah, this should be a very easy reaction to do. Okay, so while the formation is very favorable. The activation energy is huge. Okay, it's like ginormous. 可能不是一个字，但是马来西亚 ginormous is huge. Okay, it's huge because you have N N triple bond. Okay, so then you can imagine you have to break triple bonds. Okay, so probably not going to be a very easy reaction to do. Right, the bond energy is about 930 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so you have to break this bond energy in order to do your ammonia formation. Right, so. Naturally, okay. Again, enzymes. 真的，你们要觉得哦，你们说生科哦，可能很多人觉得要学生科要干嘛，对不对？但说真的，你们知道 appreciate 生物可以做的一件事情是，所有很多呃 reaction 哦，可能站在工业的角度，你要放高热量、高压去做的反应，生物可以用非常非常简单的 condition 去做出来。OK， 所以这个真的未来，呃，我相信你们应该知道。这个接下来的二十一世纪，应该很多的 focus 会在 green chemistry 上面。OK， 那 green chemistry 很大的一个 realm 其实就是 biological catalysis。OK， 因为 biology 做呢，你就可以用非常非常就是 nice 的环境。OK， 可能二十五度 C， 然后 E A T M 之类的环境去做反应嘛。OK， 所以 biology 真的是一个很 powerful 的 tool。Naturally, N2 is fixed using an enzyme called nitrogenase. OK。Nitrogen ace, so it breaks nitrogen. Okay, it catalyzes the following reaction. Okay, essentially it goes from N2 plus some protons plus a bunch of ATP. Okay, and plus electrons, and it will give you ammonia and hydrogen gas. No, there's like 16 ATP used for this reaction. Turns out, of the eight electrons, only six of them goes to nitrogen. There are two of them that go to hydrogen as a byproduct. Okay, so this enzyme is not exactly a very good enzyme. Right? Turns out, there's another very serious problem with nitrogenase. That is that nitrogen or、uh, nitrogenase is usually oxygen sensitive. Okay, so it degrades upon exposure to oxygen. Right? So. Nitrogenases are oxygen sensitive, which becomes irreversibly deactivated upon exposure to oxygen. Right now, of course, then you might be thinking, "Well, wait a minute. Then how do organisms do it?" Okay, so there are different organisms that have developed different methods to overcome oxygen sensitivity. For example, some bacteria, diazotrophic bacteria, they can form these things called heterocysts. Okay, so for example, this is bacteria called Anabina. And normally, you see these normal shape cells are photosynthetic, right? So they generate oxygen. But then you got these heterocysts inside that has a very strong cell wall. Okay, so they produce additional cell wall, and they generate a glycolipid layer. Sort of, they form this hydrophobic layer that sort of shields itself from O2 coming in. Okay, and also inside of this bacteria, this heterocyst, it does not have Photosystem two, so it doesn't generate O2 inside. So O2 from outside doesn't come in. O2 from inside doesn't happen. So it's anaerobic. Okay. Additionally, you can have、uh, legumoglobin in rhizobium. Okay, rhizobium, the bacteria that I showed you here, these rhizobium. What they can do is they can form a protein that will bind to molecular oxygen, just like. Your they look like glob globin, just like look they do, they look just like your 
hemoglobin, okay? Myoglobin, hemoglobin. <laughs> hemoglobin binds to O2, right? And these things, similarly, they also bind to O2, okay? And what they can do is they bind to O2, and then they immediately bring it to your ETC, okay? So very quickly, you quench your O2. 很快速地把你O2全部吃掉,利用掉, okay? And you can also have increased res uh, respiratory activity around the cell membrane, such that when O2 comes in to the cell membrane, and then immediately they're quenched to water. So inside the cell, they remain anaerobic. So these are some of the mechanisms that they deal with oxygen sensitivity. All right, nitrogenase, there are different kinds of nitrogenase. Most of the nitrogenases are multi-subunit polypeptide complexes coded by the MIF genes. Right? So if you read a paper that says, uh, we discover blah, 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 NIF, blah, blah, okay? So usually that just means that they are talking about nitrogenase-related genes, NIF. The most well-studied type of nitrogenase is this uh, molybdenum-dependent nitrogenase. So MO-dependent uh, nitrogenase, right? there are other types of nitrogenases. For example, you have the vanadium nitrogenase or iron-only nitrogenase. You have different kinds, right? But most well-studied type is the molybdenum um, MO dependent nitrogenase. Okay? Now, different nitrogenases, they produce different levels of byproduct H2, meaning different nitrogenases have different efficiency. Efficiency, that's what it means. The MO dependent nitrogenase consists of two proteins. Okay, two proteins. Turns out one protein is called the dinitrogenase. This is a core protein. Okay. Also, it's sometimes called the MOFE protein, molybdenum iron protein, or component one. So this particular enzyme, particular protein, catalyzes the reduction of N2 to your ammonia and H2. So this is the core protein. Okay, so this guy is like the, the, the core. Dinitrogen, the other enzyme is the dinitrogenase reductase. Okay? And this is also called the iron protein or component two. What this guy is going to do is it's going to transfer reducing power in terms of electrons. Okay? So it transfers electrons from reduced ferrodoxin to this dinitrogenase. Okay? 好,來哦,給你看一下,長什麼樣子. Okay? Schematics, 大概長這樣. All right, just you have two enzymes. Right? The first enzyme, this enzyme, is the dinitrogenase reductase. 它专门是拿来带electrons,带electrons进来. Now in this enzyme, you need to use ATP. Okay? So you use ATP to put electrons into your dinitrogenase. 然后真正在做这个nitrogenase reaction的enzyme是这个dinitrogenase enzyme. Just like when we talked about the photosystems, okay? I'm not going to go into the details of the structures of dinitrogenase and dinitrogenase reductase, but just as long as you understand, there are different states of the enzyme. And at different state of the enzyme, essentially you take electrons. For every electron you take, you generate a different state. You have a total of how many states? Nine states. Okay? Why? Because you can take Eight electrons. Okay, so 原本没有 electron, 然后每加一个 electron, 它就是一个不同的 state. 这是一个 cycle. 吃完八个 electron 以后, 它就会回到原本的那个 state. Individually, 你不太需要去知道说它每个 state 长什么样子, 但是你需要知道说它是有这样子的一个 cycle. So dinitrogenase is, the catalytic cycle is completed by sequential transfer of electron from the dinitrogenase reductase. EN, where N is the number of electrons donated by the dinitrogenase reductase. Okay? It contains two different novel iron sulfur complex. There's the P cluster, there's the FEMO cluster, okay, whatever. It shows you right here. Right? So this is the iron molybdenum cofactor or whatever you call it. So it's this big complex sort of a cluster 
that's inside of your dinitrogenase. If you look on the top, okay, the top <laughs> protein is the iron protein. Okay? This is the dinitrogenase reductase. Okay? So this enzyme uses ATP and it transfers electron from reduced ferrodoxin onto the dinitrogenase down here. So the way that it mediates electron transfer is it goes from the reduced ferrodoxin to some iron sulfur cluster protein. Essentially, it ends up on your iron molybdenum cofactor right here. Okay? And it is through this particular coordinated complex you got N2 to ammonia. Minor detail, okay? But as long as you know that exists. And there's a very interesting little side thing. This is the iron molybdenum cofactor from your rhizobium. And what you see down here is that it's modified by this thing called homocitrate. And interestingly, your homocitrate comes from plants, okay? Plants can secrete homocitrate, and this bacteria takes the homocitrate, hook it up onto the nitrogenase, okay? So this is what we usually call a symbiotic relationship. Nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen availability, okay, why is it important? Okay? Nitrogen is the primary limiting factor for agriculture. Okay? So nitrogen, you just agriculture. Okay? based on the 施肥那個那個養分啊,那個肥肥料,OK,肥料其實就是ammonia-based okay? compounds, OK? Now, okay, this ammonia is the most important nitrogen compound uh, around that almost all life could use, OK? And it's absolutely vital for crop production, OK? However, if we rely on this biological N2 fixation, it's super slow, OK? It's very slow, because N2 is very stable. So, 這是為什麼可能幾百年前我們還會動不動有那種那個叫什麼饑荒啊,你知道,可能就是你種植植物,如果你不小心來了一個什麼植物的流行病,那大家就掛了,OK,可能你人口就會瞬間減不到幾十%
没有 h y p e r b o l i process 就不会有这样子的一个 population increase。那但是站在环境的角度，你会先想说啊，人类长那么多是有什么好处吗？可能没有 ，but whatever， OK？ All right， but at least people are not dying because they're hungry， right？ Hey, so this is the billion-dollar bioengineering challenge, right? So if you guys can figure this out, I bet you anything, you'll become the most wealthy person on planet Earth. Okay, 你要是做得出来，你要是可以解决这个问题，利用 biological nitrogenase, okay, 用 nitrogenase 去做 Haber Bosch process. 我跟你讲，这这这个不是在开玩笑。这个你要是可以做的很有效的话，这个是一个。对人类社会非常非常有贡献的一件事情哦。OK, Haber Bosch process requires intensive amount of energy. OK, now on the other hand, your biological nitrogenase reaction can occur at ambient temperature and pressure, which is a lot more eco-friendly. The key challenge is somehow to improve nitrogenase reaction rate and condition. Nitrogenase is a slow enzyme, and the condition requires anaerobic. Okay, so if you can figure this out, you know. That, that, that would be it, right? So what do you think an ideal biological system would be to replace the Haber-Bosch process, okay? If you look at this thing, what kind of a biological system would be good like replace Haber-Bosch? Probably some kind of a bacteria that can use maybe photosynthesis, maybe, okay? Because all you need is a source of electron Source of ATP, okay. 那如果你今天是用，比如说什么 glucose， 那你还会有 problem generate CO2, okay. 那可能大家会说，呃，不是很好 ，right? 但是如果你今天是用 photosynthetic 的 organism， 那你的 ATP 跟 energy, ATP 基本上是阳光嘛 ，okay? Electron 是从哪里来？对啊，水嘛 ，H2O, okay? 所以 ideally, a perfect biological system would be Algae, okay, or plants, or some kind of photosynthetic organism, and if you can make Haber-Bosch's Haber-Bosch process come true in microalgae, that's it. Okay, we solve like agriculture problems, right? One other thing that I want to mention here is that 为什么 Haber-Bosch process 是一个很麻烦的东西哦 ？N2 虽然空气里面很多，但是 H2 不是哦。H 空气里面没有 H2 之前有很少。但是基本上没有什么 H2 哦，那你 H2 从哪里来 ？H2 现在是从 methane 来的 ，methane 是天然气。OK， 所以 Haber-Bosch process highly rely on fossil fuel. OK， so um hydrogen is derived from methane. Of course 啊，你还是可以说我用电水解去产 H2， 对，但 efficiency 不是很高嘛。那那目前你的 H2 都是用这个天然气来做的，所以这个整个 process 不光是耗能。它是 non-renewable， 所、okay, 以、so、总有一天这个 process 会会 run out。We talked about N2 to ammonia. Now we're going to talk about nitrate. Okay, so we can go nitrate reduction to nitrite. Okay, so this is a pretty simple reaction.、Uh, it uses an enzyme called the nitrite reductase. Okay, so nitrite can then we'll see on the next slide goes to、uh, ammonia. But first you go from nitrate to nitrite. Enzyme pretty pretty simple. All you gotta do is use a NADH or NADPH. Okay, that's fine, right? However, interestingly, in the nitrate reduction, okay, you got these weird cofactor, right? So it's not just a direct reduction of a hydride transfer, right? Because usually, we say NADH or NADPH is doing a hydride transfer. It is putting a H minus in this molecule. But you from this NO Three minus 到 NO two minus 上面是有 H 没有嘛，对不对？没有 H 嘛，对不对？所以它不是一个 hydride transfer 那么简单的东西。As a result, turns out you go from NADPH to FAD to a little cytochrome to a molybdenum and then you go to nitrate. Okay, 所以它其实 pass 的是 electron, right? And you got this really weird molybdenum cofactor called the molybdoturin. Okay, it looks like that, right? Just a cofactor, just so that you know it exists. Right? Now, once you get nitrite, you can go from nitrite to ammonia. So the reduction of a nitrite to ammonia is carried out in three steps by one enzyme. Okay, called the nitrite reductase. And this enzyme is going to turn nitrite to NO minus to this weird-looking thing, and then you go to ammonia. 
Okay, so sequential reduction. Okay, it has a sequential reduction. So total, you require six reduced ferrodoxin. Okay, so this enzyme has a lot of reducing power. Okay, it has to have six electrons. Right, you have six reduced ferrodoxin. Okay, huh? So higher plants, algae, cyanobacteria use ferrodoxin as the electron donor in this six electron reaction. And in this enzyme, you got this one iron sulfur center and one molecule of shiroheme, which is a partially reduced iron porphyrin. Okay, so it has the heme, which is very similar. It has the middle of the heme. Okay, and the middle is the iron. That again, it's just a cofactor called shiroheme. It's not important. It's just so that you know that they exist. Okay, but please know that they exist. So ammonia, how is ammonia incorporated into metabolism, right? So ammonia is incorporated into metabolism through primarily these five reactions, okay? You go from alpha KG to glutamate, or you can go from glutamate to glutamine, or you can go from aspartate to asparagine, or you have this last thing, this is kind of weird, but we'll talk about this in urea cycle. Uh, this is go from ammonia plus CO2 gives you carbamyl phosphate, okay? The fifth one is glutamine go to alpha KG to generate glutamate, okay? So primarily five reactions. That's it for today.